these gentlemen stepped up to the plate Monday, did a fantastic job, saved lives, and they're going home to see their families at the end of the day as well. Nashville police officers are being praised for their quick response and life-saving actions amidst the deadly Covenant school shooting. Nashville police officers yesterday are absolute definitions of heroes. Six people were killed when a 28-year-old opened fire at the Covenant School Nashville Private Christian School. Among the victims, three nine-year-old students, Evelyn Dykehouse, Hallie Scruggs, and William Kinney. 60-year-old Catherine Koontz, who was head of the school, was also shot and killed, along with 61-year-old Cynthia Peak, a substitute teacher, and Mike Hill, a custodian. Kids are all locked down, but we have two kids that we don't know where they are. Okay. Nashville officials confirmed the shooter once attended the Covenant School, but after interviewing their parents and school officials, detectives still had no concrete explanation for a motive. Officials say there were no apparent issues or problems the shooter had while studying there. But even in the early stages of the investigation, it's still clear that they targeted the elementary school. End of this hall is Fellowship Hall. They, are, they just said they heard gunshots down there, and then upstairs are a bunch of kids. After the shooting, investigators recovered a so-called manifesto written by the shooter and a map of the school noting entry points. As the early stages of the investigation continue, the work of first responders has now taken center stage. We call them active shooters. I feel like to be politically correct, they're active murderers. They're there to take as many lives in a short amount of time as possible. And as law enforcement officers, we have to do uh, our job to get in there and eliminate and stop the killing as quickly as possible. Former Sheriff's Deputy and active shooting trainer Chad Ayers says Nashville officers responded quickly and appropriately, saving lives along the way. There is nothing that I can pick apart on these guys. They did a fantastic job. Lives were saved that day. At about 9.30 a.m. on March 27th, the shooter left their home in Nashville. By 9.53 a.m., surveillance video catches them arriving at the Covenant School. At 9.57 a.m., the shooter messages a former middle school teammate, saying things like, quote, you'll probably hear about me on the news after I die. This is my last goodbye. By 10.10 a.m., they approach the school armed with two rifles, a handgun, and significant ammunition. Video released by the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department shows them shoot the glass of some double doors and then walk inside. At 10.13 a.m., dispatch receives the first 911 call about the shooting, and by 10.24 a.m., officers are on the scene. In just minutes, by 10.27 a.m., officers locate the shooter, eventually shooting and killing them. Retired police sergeant and private investigator Ashton Pack says the police's response was perfect. I don't know what they're doing in Nashville, but they're doing something right. So kudos to Nashville. Kudos to those cops out there who, who handled absolute business yesterday and eliminated the threat. Officers Michael Colazzo, a 10-year veteran of the department, and Rex Engelbert, a four-year PD veteran, opened fire killing the gunman. When things are going really bad, I've seen police officers step up, just that, that, that lowest rank of police officer, and I've seen them, I've seen them take, kind of take over tactical situations, maybe where the sergeant isn't really as tactically, uh, he, doesn't have, he or she doesn't have that, that talent to say. Not to usurp their authority, but that's what we need. That's what we want to see. And, and I'm so glad that that cop was there. Just one day after the shooting, the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department released body camera footage from the incident. It's that video that PAC says shows real heroism. It is, again, that body camera footage was just an absolute testament to the training of targeted violence response. Rifle first. Rifle first. Blue, go. Go, 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 go. Go. Move. Move. I'm with you. Pack specifically points out the response by Officer Michael Colazzo. Someone's got to take charge. I have a feeling that's a very tenured uh, street cop. That's a person, that's a guy who's been there, kind of kind of knows, you know, he, he he's he's that high-functioning outlier. But the response as a whole was what experts call textbook. Uh, Nashville did an amazing job. Um, they did exactly what they were told to do and, and trained to do. Uh, whereas they came in, there was no gunfire. There was no what we call stimulus. So they methodically start clearing those rooms 
And as you saw in the video, the moment that the gunfire started erupting again, they left clearing. They went to the sound of gunfire. Kudos to those officers in Nashville. Uh, it's obvious that they have trained a lot for this. Ayers says police response to an active shooter situation has changed over time. Right now, officers are trained to run into the action regardless of whether they are alone. Columbine really changed how law enforcement responds to active shooter events uh, because they waited outside of Columbine for tactical unit SWAT team to get there. Um, we can't do that. Every second could be another life. So we are trained if I am by myself or if I have someone with me, we're going in. And so, and, and I'm going to use whatever means necessary, driving my patrol car through the front door if I can't get in to make entry to start saving lives. Let's go! Metro Police! So once I make entry into that building, just like we saw Nashville do, we're going to methodically quickly start clearing those rooms because we don't have stimulus. We don't have gunfire telling us where the bad guy is. Um, but, you know, methodically, quickly clearing those rooms. Metro Police! Bathroom, bathroom, small bathroom. Clear. But the moment gunfire kicks off, we are going to go to the sound of that gunfire and start closing the gap to eliminate that threat as quickly as possible. It's upstairs. It sounds like it's upstairs. You see them literally bypassing, you know, victims on the ground. And they address the threat and they put the threat down and there's no more deadly force threat. Go, 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 go. The quick response from Nashville officers is being compared to a lengthy response by Texas officers at the Uvalde school shooting last May. 21 people were killed and 18 more injured when a gunman opened fire at Robb Elementary School on May 24, 2022. First responders were widely criticized after the shooting for the 77 minutes, more than an hour, it took them to enter the school. Let's just put it out there. Uvalde was a fail. It was a fail on law enforcement, and I'll just put it in that hurts me to have to say as a former law enforcement officer, but it was. Um, and we learned a lot from that and we're continuing to learn. There were people who were in positions of authority who I had, in my opinion, have no business being in a position of authority. And um, again, in Uvalde, it took that maverick leader, uh, a, a border patrol agent, who was, my understanding was basically a, a SWAT, their version of their SWAT team to make a decision and go. And so, that's a culture issue within law enforcement. In the Uvalde school shooting, PAC believes it's a policing culture issue that led to that long response time. And so I think that you see the differences. I, I bet the difference in the police departments is, is a culture issue. Uvalde had a culture of, I don't want any, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to wait for the boss to make a decision as where maybe Nashville has fostered an, an, a spirit of, yeah, we have rules and regulations, but when lives are on the line, we want you to step up and make make decisions and, and, and handle business to save our citizens' lives, who we serve. In contrast, PAC says Nashville officers were clearly trained for an active shooter situation. When you, when you see those cops, on, they're almost on autopilot because they don't have to think about it because they've done it so many times in training that it's automatic. It's that auto, auto, automatic response to your brain. Training, 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 repetitive training and reverting back to your training and saying, all right, this is it. You know, this is game day. We are going in here, you know, and I'm going to sacrifice my life for these innocent children. Ayers says training is critical and led to the officers knowingly running into danger. I literally have chills thinking about it and you can get a lump in my throat because I, I've been there. You know, I've responded to these types of events before. And when they signed up for this job, they understood that's a risk they are, they are taking. You know, that they may not go home to see their families at the end of the day. Um, hopefully they're going into this scene saying, I will win, just like, you know, if you're a civilian in the setting, I'm going to survive. And while police training is important, so too is training in schools and offices. We need to be popping doors, windows, getting kids out, throwing them through out of windows, telling them to run, run, run. Uh, this idea of, of huddling kids to the corner of a room is, is horrific. You know, it makes it easy. If, if we're huddled together in the room or if we're sitting under our desk, you're an easy target. You're, you're setting yourself up to be a victim. I don't want you to be a victim. I want you to be a survivor. So get out if you can. Take off running. I would much rather be looking for a lost kid in the woods than working a crime scene with them inside that classroom. So if we can get out, get out. If not, we want to shut, lock, 
barricade that classroom, spread out in the room. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, your, your physical type, you can do something, throw things, throw cell phones, spray them with fire extinguishers, but get your hands on these people as quickly as you can. They come in with, you know, to these schools with guns thinking they're in charge and they're not anticipating any resistance show resistance. But the gruesome scene will likely stay with first responders forever. Never forget that what those cops saw in that school can never be unseen. The crime scene analysts who responded, who had to document the horrificness of this event can never be unseen. The medical and firefighters who ran in trying to save lives and couldn't can never be unseen. The dispatchers on the other side who had to listen to everything through an earpiece just praying that everything would be right and no lives were lost. But all these all these men and women who are part of this apparatus of when you call 911, when the wolf's at your door, and the wolf was at the door, and those cops in Nashville absolutely addressed it. I'm very proud of their actions. Pack believes the Nashville shooting should prompt a larger conversation. We don't have to have children dying in schools. We have to, as a country, start to have conversations with each other and we need to be prepared to hear things that we might not agree with on the surface, but let's talk about it. Because if we just keep screaming at each other, it's never going to get fixed. In the end, both PAC and Ayers separately agree Nashville officers couldn't have responded better. The only thing I could have done differently is jumped in a time machine and engaged the suspect as she walked up to the school with a, a firearm. That's the only thing I could have done differently. And, and unfortunately, we just we don't have time travel yet. so. We, if I had it, that's what I'd go back to. These police officers were, it was textbook. An investigation into the shooting is still underway. Experts tell me a preliminary report could be released in the near future, but it could take years to complete a full investigation. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.